Hello, everybody. I'm Ed Holinsky, talking to you from the Finger Lakes region here in New York State. I'm also here with the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. Today, we have a very, very special guest from Baltimore, Maryland, and via Skype, All-American, All All-Western New York lineman, Joe Scalise. Joe, glad you could join us here today on the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame YouTube channel. Thank you for having me. It's a great honor to be asked to do this and uh, be able to give back to the Hall of Fame just a little bit. You played varsity for North Tonawanda 99, 2000, 2001. Dave Anastasi's last year, the first two years of, of Eric Jancy. What do you remember or what strikes you the most about your playing days back then? So regardless of who the head coach was, it was extremely evident that we did things the right way and we did them hard, we did them fast and we did them aggressive. Um, I was very fortunate enough to play for coach Anastasi in his last year of coaching. Um, and then, you know, he turned the reins over to Eric Jancy and Rick Tom, and it was just continued on the success, continued on the tradition and, you know, do it right, do it hard and be aggressive. What did you notice about their their coaching styles? What what differentiated each other one from the other? You know, I don't think there's a real big difference between them. They they preached student athlete, so we had to take care of the books first. Um, and then once you took care of the books, you got out onto the playing field, and now you were an athlete. But they always said you had to be smart. You know what you're doing, how to do it. And then just take advantage of being better prepared than anybody else that was out there. When Coach Jancy took over, did you sense something that something special was happening? He was building something that's ultimately what's going to be great. And didn't know what year you might go to the, the title game or win the sectionals. But it must have felt that, and I don't mean to put words in your mouth, but it must have felt you had something special and good things were always going to happen with you guys. Based on what I witnessed from him as, you know, assistant coach in my first year on varsity to when he took over as head coach, everything that he did was 100 percent. And he knew the exact minute detail of the smallest little thing. And the thing that sticks out in my mind is when we would line up the field for the national anthem, we all had a specific yard line that we had to stand on for the national anthem. That is the detail that he went down to and what he ran the program with. And when somebody does stuff to that um, specific of a routine, you know they're just destined for success. And then that translated over to the weight room. You know, we did everything the right way. It wasn't about how strong you were. It was doing it the right way. And then the strength came. Um, so it was just a matter of time until North Tonawanda got back into the championships. Did you realize playing for North Tonawanda, the type of history that was behind the program and uh, the rich history that had been there since the 1800s? So what's pretty cool is uh, Mr. Fries was good friends with a neighbor of mine. So I've known God now, I've known Mr. Fries for about 30 years. So he would always drop hints when he was at my neighbor's house, you know, about the Hall of Fame and you know, what it was. And I played youth football all the way through and I always looked up to the older guys. And, and, you know, I wasn't aware that it went back all the way to the, you know, late 1800s when I first got involved. But as once I got involved in the high school program, I loved the history. You know, I always, you know, ask questions, you know, I look up information and um, I'm an extremely prideful alum of North Tonawanda. I want to talk to you about the TNT rivalry. You played in three games against them. Um, I've asked people from different eras and what the feeling was back then for them. How was the feeling between your teammates and Tonawanda during those years for the TNT rivalry? Well, the greatest thing about it is, you know, they always try to put big school against small school. And when it came time to that game, record didn't matter. Big school, small school didn't matter. You know, it was, you know, running into the guy at the, you know, Boulevard Mall, you know, or the Galleria Mall and you wearing your NT jacket, them wearing their Tonawanda jacket or seeing somebody at the Canal Fest. You wanted to win for that reason. And it's just about pride. And that's all it was about. And, uh, 
That was the best thing about the TNT game was having those bragging rights for a year. And I was fortunate enough to win two out of the three I played in. We should have won all three, but that's another just topic for discussion. What do you remember about your playing days at North Tonawanda? Do you have any stories that you can share with us? So it's, you know, when you reached out earlier in the week, I was trying to think, you know, what do I remember from North Tonawanda and my playing days? And it's not that games really stick out. What stick out is what we did in practice, what we were doing in the weight room, Friday morning basketball with Coach Jancy and Coach Tom, um, going out to eat after games, whether it was to Zebs or Hooters. Um, it was those times and relationships with my teammates that I still maintain to this day that really stick out to me um, as opposed to a particular moment in the game. You played in North Tonawanda till 2001, named all Western New York for the big school. You moved on to Ithaca College. How was that experience, or what did you take from North Tonawanda to Ithaca College that applied? Or were you put into a completely different system? So what was very interesting is when I first went to Ithaca, I was there as a defensive lineman. Uh, the guy that recruited me was the defensive coordinator. Um, so he's like, you're going to play defensive line. Uh, a few days into camp, the offensive coordinator, um, who is now a coach in the NFL, got me to come over to the offensive side of the ball. And, you know, I played four years, started four years as an offensive guard. I was extremely fortunate to play for a guy like Eric Jancy. Eric Jancy was an offensive lineman himself. He taught me just about everything I needed to do to be extremely successful as a run blocker. And that's a, that's a, a pretty funny story. So NT at the time, we didn't throw the ball. So I knew how to run block. I knew how to run block and I knew how to run block. Our pass block was run block and stop. So when I got to college, I had to learn how to pass block and it wasn't a problem because I had solid fundamentals. I had, you know, the right mindset. And it was um, it was funny because the coaches would say, Scalise, you sure you know how to pass block? All you guys did was run the ball up there in North Tonawanda. And uh, it was it was a great experience. At North Tonawanda, who were some of the running backs that you did block for? So uh, my sophomore year, the running backs uh, was Jeff Gain. Eric Zorich, Jason Haug, Paul Crane. Um, and then junior year was Paul Crane, Eric Zorich, Brian Lawn. Um, and then the DeShane brothers started getting thrown in the mix my junior year. And then senior year was the uh, Brandon at quarterback, the other uh, Nick DeShane as a running back, Montanti as a fullback, uh, Tucker as a fullback. Uh, those are the guys I remember. Quite, quite an arsenal of uh, NT running backs during that time period. It just seemed like Coach Chancy could just bring them out one right after another, and they were all ready to play. 100%. Um, the best thing was we had a system. You know, the triple option that he instilled, you know, it didn't really matter, you know, what your running style was. He called a play that fit your running style. You know, and we had different guys that did different things. and. I think that's what the genius is behind what Coach Jancy did is he could take somebody that probably wasn't a full-time running back, but yet they were a weapon in his offense because he put them in a position to be successful. Back then, your uh, junior and senior years, were you guys going to camp in Indiana at that point, or did that happen after you had graduated? So the first time we went to Indiana camp was uh, going into my senior year. So. Um, yeah, it was the end of my junior year, so it was going into my senior year, and it was probably one of the coolest experiences from a team-building perspective that I've been a part of. You know, we took a bus ride out to some place where none of us have ever been. We were dorming with guys that we've never, you know, spent a night with in some cases, and we practiced three times a day for three days in, you know, dry heat out in Indiana. And we became better. And it was just, we became better because we became a better team, because we knew each other. We fought with each other. You know, we ate with each other. We traveled with each other. And it was just all about the team. Now, you take an even bigger picture, the younger kids came too. 
So it wasn't just the team, it was the program. And that's where we first started seeing that it was bigger than just the team. And then obviously the success after I left, uh, when they won the first uh, sectional title, those were all the guys that were, you know, put into place that year. Tremendous. Your senior year at um, Ithaca College, named All-American. Did you have any aspirations to try to at least try out with the pros at that point? So, you know, I'm barely six foot. Um, I had a tremendous playing career. I was very, very honored by all the accolades. I never, as an offensive lineman, my job is just to keep guys off the quarterback and open up holes for the running back. So, you know, I was very, very satisfied, you know, when my playing career ended and I was fortunate enough to get one extra game and then go represent the United States down in Mexico. Uh, we played Team USA versus Team Mexico. And I'm a realist. I understand I'm not tall enough. I don't have long enough arms. You know, I didn't have quick enough feet to say play defensive line. So I knew realistically that the NFL wasn't a possibility. Now, do I think I could have went and, you know, did a, you know, OTA or something like that? 100%. But, um, you know, I just don't have the arm length, which coming down to the particular techniques is just you're ineffective with short arms. After now, cow, go ahead. I'm sorry. Finish. So, you know, I do have my offensive coordinator is now a coach in the NFL. And, you know, I speak with him frequently and he tells me, you know, if you had longer arms, you were a little bit taller. He goes, you could do what these guys do. Um, but I was very realistic with what I, you know, what I was. And I was very satisfied with what I was. After college, you came back to North Tonawanda. You coached for a year on the varsity side. Um, what did you bring to the program coming back from Ithaca College? I think the biggest thing that I brought back and the reason that I was asked to come back by Coach Jans and Coach Tom was they wanted to show the current players the success of a former student athlete that came through North Tonawanda. So I came back, I was able to speak of what these guys did for me, what the program did for me. And I was just able to bring back just, you know, a recent player at the college level. And, you know, some of the kids were interested in, you know, what, what I did, how I did it. You know, they would, you know, ask for videos and stuff like that. And, you know, it was just there, you know, as another outlet because I wasn't a teacher, but I was a coach. So I had a little different uh, perspective with the kids. You left then after that one year and moved on to Baltimore. You are in education right now down in the Baltimore school district. You coach for a couple of years as well. And you don't, you don't, you don't coach any longer. Do you get the itch to get back into coaching when you come back into that, that July, August time period where it's uh, time to, to get together for, uh, for training camp and also then for preseason pre workouts? So here's probably the best thing that has happened to me the last uh, three years, three or four years. When North Tonawanda hired Coach Jancy back, uh, he made a phone call and he asked if I'd come back for camp. And I have came back and I think for the last three years under both Coach Jancy and Coach Tom, I've coached during camp up at North Tonawanda. I've came back for three or four days. I've worked with the offense and defensive line. And that actually fulfills my appetite to, of coaching. Uh, I do have a little bit of an itch to get back, uh, not necessarily at the high school level. I have thought about potentially getting back at the college level. Um, it just timing right now isn't where it needs to be, but coaching is probably in my future down the line. We've talked about some different things here during this conversation. What have I missed? What have I not asked you? Or better yet, what would you like to add? Um, the biggest thing is, you know, I, when I went to Ithaca College, you know, everybody tells war stories from high school and this, that, and the other thing. And the biggest thing that I took away from is the respect that my coaches had for North Tonawanda football. And I think that comes back to the respect that they had for um, specifically Coach Jancy and Coach Tom. 
they knew they were getting a player from a solid program. Um, then, you know, the year after I went there to the DeShane brothers and Dave Celeste also came to Ithaca college. So, you know, and then guys in the team will be like, wow, you got a pretty good program back at your high school. And so the, the legend kind of grew and some of my college teammates will probably tell you, you know, they're sick of hearing about North Tonawanda, you know, because I spoke very highly of my high school. A lot of guys would come back and spend time, you know, long weekends and such. And, you know, I'm just extremely proud of where I came from, who I played for, and what the North Carolina Football Hall of Fame has done for not only myself, my brother, but the, you know, thousands of other student athletes that have came through. Um, so that's why when, you know, I got the phone call a couple of years ago to come back and give back. I do everything in my power to give back to the program. Um because I received so much from the North Tonawanda Football Hall of Fame and the North Tonawanda Football Program. One, one final question. Do you have any regrets about your high school playing career your, or your college playing career? Um, the only regret, and it's not necessarily a regret, I wish I was able to play in a, a playoff game in high school. We never made the playoffs. We won two consolation bowl games, which – started the trajectory to the success after I had graduated. So it's not necessarily a regret. I just wish um, maybe I could have played in a playoff game in my high school career. Um, I have zero regrets in my college career. If I had to do it all over again, I 100% would go back to Ithaca College. My four years there were absolutely fantastic. Um, I had a very, very, very good career. Um, had met my best friends there. Um, coaches were fantastic who are now still current friends. And um, I'm actually going to be inducted into the Athletic Hall of Fame at Ithaca College. It was supposed to be this past fall, but COVID stopped that. So I will be inducted next fall into the Ithaca Athletic Hall of Fame with some former bomb or some former lumberjacks, John Laper, and I can't think of his first name, but Mahoney. Uh, they both went to Ithaca College and are both in the Athletic Hall of Fame. So I'm going to join some lumberjacks in the Ithaca Athletic Hall of Fame. That's awesome. I love that you're repping Jack's football and in, in your, your golf shirt right there. Better yet, it's more importantly, you can fit into it still, which, you know, after, after stop playing. Joe Scalise, I want to thank you so much for joining me today, talking about North Tonawanda football, reminiscing about the days. I wish you well. I wish you good health. And thanks again. Thanks for having me. And you can't beat NT. Go Jacks.